So we're here today with Craig Dew, CEO at Lion Light Sports Group. Craig, how, how are you doing? I'm very well, thank you, Gary. Yourself? I'm not too bad. Yeah, yeah. Strange times we live in, as uh, as we keep finding out. So, ha have things been with you? I suppose in these challenging times, how have you been been bearing up? As obviously in terms of you personally, and, and in terms of the business as well. How has COVID nineteen uh, impacted you? Yeah. I mean, how has it not? I suppose. Yeah. That's probably a better way to start. Um, yeah, it's been very challenging um, to say the least. I think for our whole industry, um, you know, it's been very you know, devastating, you know, financially devastating. Uh, it's been very frustrating. Obviously, uh, we, we took on um, Etap Caledonia, Blenheim and London Triathlons last year, and we'd really sort of got ahead of steam up, a, a real momentum behind them. Um, mm. London uh, had sold out on the Sunday. Blenheim was sold out. Etap was sold out. Um, so, unfortunately, you know, we had to, to postpone all of those or, or cancel them. So, you know, that... That was deeply frustrating, um, obviously financially devastating, as it has been for, for, for everybody else. Um, but that was kind of like the, the feelings for the first six or so weeks. And I think since then, we've tried to turn things around and, and look at the positives and, and look uh, at the future. Uh, yeah, yeah. So how have, you, how have you done that? How have you been obviously t taking what is a very difficult situation, turning it around? I suppose, obviously, the first thing is with the athletes. So I suppose it's a twofold question. How have the athletes responded to the cancellations or your handling of the cancellations? And how how are you, yeah, as you say, putting more of a positive turn on things? Yeah, I, I think people uh, have, have understood. Uh, we made a decision, you know, despite what the terms and conditions say, uh, that we wanted to protect the, the events and the event brands. So we made a decision that if people did ask for a refund, we would. Uh, refund um, but I think because we put that out there actually the vast majority of people um, actually deferred uh, to, yep. to either the autumn or, or to next year so we've been the community has been absolutely fantastic um, and really supportive um, so so that's been great I think you know in terms of our staff again they've been brilliant <laughs> I feel so gutted for them you know they, they just want to get out there and deliver, you know, amazing experiences for people. Uh, and they haven't been able to. We've had to furlough sort of two thirds of the team uh, just to enable us to get through this. But they've been really supportive, and you know, we're looking forward to welcoming them back um, in in the autumn. Uh, in terms of other kind of positives, obviously more people participating out there, and kind of you know, I think everybody's seeing the rise in you know, all, all the bikes have been dusted off and got out of the garage or the shed. Uh, more people running, walking, uh, which is fantastic. And I, I think hopefully that will feed through. I expect Park Run to see a huge increase when uh, um, all the people who have done their couch to 5K uh, are able to go to Park Run. And then hopefully they'll ca carry on those those journeys and uh, we, we can pick them up and bring them into, into our event. Yeah, yeah, no, fantastic. So the, the other obviously reason to, to talk is that you, you've undertaken a bit of a rebranding and a re relaunch of the business. So perhaps you can talk a bit about how that came about and um, was it impacted by the current crisis in terms of your timings? Did you bring it forward or did you delay in terms of, you know, the way that you're actually bringing this to market? Yeah. Um, I mean, this has been another positive of, of COVID. Obviously, everything stopped. Um, it's enabled us for the first time to really kind of focus without all the other distractions on uh, on the future. Um, and uh, most people probably don't know, but Lima Sports Group's got two two elements. Um, one is kind of rights holder for things like Blenheim and, and London Tri and London Duathlon. Um, and actually our core business and, you know, that goes back 30 years now is a, an agency. So we work with people like Nike, Tesco's, um, uh, BOA, and we create their participation uh, programs. So we don't actually own them. We're, we're paid as, as agents to, to create these participation programs. So that's the part of the business that we recently relaunched. Our rights holder business will be relaunching in a month's time. So uh, watch this space. Okay, okay. And yes, we, we've been planning it for 18 months. Uh, we think it's a brilliant time for, for brands to, to kind of get more involved. I think the old sponsorship model's gone. But I think for brands, you know, and this kind of crisis has shown it kind of, you know, uh, tapping into the community and, and the grassroots and the everyday athletes, you know, is really where kind of I, I think brands will, you know, need to be seen to, to be uh, going forward. I think we've seen that with a lot of the kind of the grassroots and, and charity and community initiatives that have already. Mm. So it's, it's an interesting point. So do you think, because as you say, 
brands will see the virtues and the values of, of that kind of activation, but will they see the virtues of doing it en masse? Because obviously the, the traditional model has been very much mass participation events. As you say, you, 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 you bring the brands to those athletes en masse, uh, and now certainly until a vaccine has arrived, uh, at the very least the, the activation will be different. Uh, it may be you know, a staggered start, it may be time trial type formats, those kinds of things. Do you see mass still as relevant for brands or do you feel that there's gonna be a, a sort of polarizing in terms of the way that experience is played out for the the critical piece is that the live event is is one point, you know, one moment that the brands can engage. Actually, mm -hmm. the opportunity for brands is, you know, throughout the whole journey that, that these um, everyday athletes are going on. And yeah. you know, the, the data, the depth of engagement, the relationships that they can they can build, you know, that's where we see uh, the value going forward. And, of course, yeah. the events are very important, but only as part of the whole yeah. Did you, do you feel there's been a bit of a, a kind of missed opportunity there in that, as you say, everything's just been about race day so much and not about the build up activation and the post race activation as well, like this 365 way of engaging? 100%. I think our industry kind of needs to, to catch up. Uh, and I think, you know, we do have amazing kind of relationships and, and two way dialogue with, with the participants. Uh, and I think brands can kind of benefit massively from that. You know, you're talking about a fundamental passion you know, that people have for, for um, you know, whichever sport they choose or the array of uh, sports or events that, that they choose. And I think key to us, you know, and, and we've been developing uh, our internal process, it's understanding and really what motivates people, you know, why, why are they, where are they at on their, on their participation journey? And mm -hmm. we've you know, 20,000 people on the start line at Royal Parks, every single one has, has kind of come from a, a, a different, on a different journey to, to get to that start line. We yeah. want to understand, you know, using data and insights, we want to understand each of those individual. Yeah, uh, so I'm guessing this is where the, the tagline Active World Intelligence comes in. So if I'm correct, it, it's it's more of a bespoke pathway to, to help the brand, part, you know, in partner on that campaign, essentially. Is, is, is that correct? Yeah, exactly. We, you know, we've we've created a brand that really explains our process that we go through, mm -hmm. uh, kind of to to introduce a brand into into participation sport. Um, it combines our thirty years of experience, all the different types of models, and kind of you know what works mm -hmm. with data and insight. And and we're investing significantly in in um, tools and, and a very expensive data stack uh, and various um, kind of ultimately i guess ar type ai sorry type um uh technology um but it wouldn't you know that doesn't make any sense unless you understand it and really understand the the participant themselves and so mm. it also combines that with the, the creative uh, elements of, of our team as well yeah so, so, so I'm, I'm guessing that are you targeting predi predominantly non-endemic brands are those brands not from the industry and and sort of uh so it's not in the as you say the we'll come to the maybe we need a separate interview about the whole rights business and how that, that rights holding business is going to evolve as well but you, you're not seeing this in the same way as yeah bring in a brand they headline sponsor an event um you're you're, you're definitely opening up that as you say a flow or a pipeline for them to to tap into is that a kind of standardized process or you mentioned ai is this something that you would you would see evolving in terms of the way that the data evolves as well as um, that that the, the brand one brand it, its approach may not be the same as, as another for example is that is that correct yeah 100 yeah. percent. so i mean awi is a process that we go through and i'm not going to give you all the, the special source carry but um no, 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 process no, no, that no. We... i'm sure some very <laughs> clever guys who know their math have kind of pulled that together the fact that you called it awi um, instead of active world intelligence means it just feels even more so. <laughs> exactly. um <laughs> And so, yes, so, so the data element is, is absolutely fundamental to it and the insights that we draw. But the starting point for us when we talk to brands, yes, we have our own rights, but actually we're looking to bring brands into the space. Uh, and, you know, when we look at their audiences and what they're trying to achieve, if we feel a part run or, or something else is the right solution, then, you know, we'll look to try and uh, build a campaign for them kind of with whatever is the appropriate uh, sort of vehicle for it. Mm -hmm. 
that said, of course, you know, we are trying to grow uh, the, the rights holding side of the business, which is, again, will be announcing in, in a month or so's time. Um, and through that, we're looking at how we create campaigns that kind of go across all of our uh, events rather than that kind of you know, pure title, old, yeah. old kind of um, model uh, of, of sponsorship. Do, do you feel that that, I won't say it's dead, but do you feel that that headline sponsorship is well, it's almost certainly more challenging to 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 get. But do you, do you feel that that is is something that will again evolve as we come out of this crisis, perhaps? Hundred percent. I, I think we've got to prove to brands what you know what the value is, and I think just that whole expecting a brand because it's you know you've got a great event and you've got twenty thousand people who kind of are passionate about it. It's not enough. You know the brand is trying mm. to when they sell uh, their, their products and services and we need to kind of join the dots uh, between the two so yes i think the old model has completely gone uh, there'll be some kind of um uh, examples that kind of book the trend going forward i think there always is but we've got to evolve as a business if if we want kind of uh, brands to, to invest in it yeah uh, yeah, yeah. Data technology i kind of you know the currency um and you know I think what we can offer to brands, you know, obviously purpose-driven, community and social, mental and physical well-being, I think they're all kind of needed, obviously, now more than, more than ever. Absolutely. Absolutely. You mentioned, obviously, you know, bringing a brand uh, to the market. Is there any advice that you'd give to a brand looking to enter the market now? So if you're like a, a product offering, you know, there's a lot obviously going on in sports tech, um, you know, obviously thinking more endemically now rather than in the context of a, a non-endemic brand sponsoring or activating with athletes. Is there anything, you know, given your experience um, and, you know, your, your time with, with Limelight that um, for anybody who's looking at making the leap, seem like, maybe seem like a pretty scary time to do that, but is there any guidance um, that, that you are, or recommendations that you might have in, in terms of doing that and making that leap in, in this space at the moment? Yeah, I think from a brand perspective, um, you know, of the, when we get in front of the marketing director, they're often kind of an everyday athlete. <laughs> and, and I think they only see um, the kind of a mass participation event from that lens. Uh, and it's almost like kind of all their other marketing skill set goes out the window because they, they see it. Um, in a certain way yeah. and I think what they can extract the value they can extract out of an association with, with you know mass participation is much much broader and, and I think potentially more scientific you know with, with the data route that, that we're going there mm. uh, and because they see it through their everyday athlete lens they don't necessarily see the full value of it and place what we believe is all of the sponsorships uh, you yeah. know Exist are massively undervalued. I suppose it's, it's, it's true, isn't it? That this designed by athletes for athletes, which is often what you hear around many products, isn't necessarily the the best strap line that you would would, would have. Because as you say, you're you're not you're you're only looking at that particular cohort. I suppose it works well for such a, a performance ended product that would only ever be utilized by a performance orientated athlete. You know, something much more at the sports tech level. But yeah, you're right. We we do need to have. Many layers of of, uh, of of openness to to all individuals, particularly as you pointed out earlier, that so many people are now getting more active, um, and and that in turn means that we can't have any barriers whatsoever in terms of events or or other brand experiences for that matter. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. I think that's kind of limelight sweet spot, if you like. Um, yes, we want to be all authentic, so they kind of you know the weekend warrior, and we have lots of them at Blenheim in London. It has to be an authentic sports experience, but limelight, you know, our mission is to, to make these things much more accessible. Um, and so, you know, Etapa Caledonia, 85 mile kind of um, uh, by ride. And, you know, that the, the, the segment that, that does that is 70 odd percent male kind of over 40. Um, but the, the, a 40 miler was created for Etapa Caledonia and that is majority female. Have entered it. Blenheim Triathlon is almost 50 50. We're trying to engineer it so it gets to 50 50 male female split, and we were close before uh, we had to put a pause on things. Um, London Tri, so we, we've kind of focused the Sunday, the Olympic event, on those kind of, you know, the people who want to race 
the Saturday is much more of a kind of community, corporate, um, beginner um, type type environment. So we're absolutely trying to make things more accessible. We're also investing in youth sport programs to kind of bring, you know, particularly multi-sport is uh, massively underrepresented by even under 25, not even under 20. Yeah. Yeah. We're looking at working with various groups uh, in London to bring under 25s uh, participation in. We're looking at actually allocating a certain number of places at significantly reduced uh, costs for under 25s going forward across all of our programs. So we feel a real kind of, uh, you know, uh, passion for, for getting more people, different types of people involved in. in our oh, program. yeah, yeah. Well, I think many of us share that passion, don't we? Because the, the average age of a triathlete can't keep creeping up to 45, 46, 47, because that's not a long term. Uh, vision for any business is it, is it? Uh, talking to the long term and this is a question that we always ask towards the end of these little inside the news pieces that, that we do um in terms of the future because i think you're, you're probably what you just said a lot of that would actually feed through to the future because you're it seems like you're very much looking to future proof your business but uh, do you have any thoughts around the prospects for endurance sport going forward i mean the dent that we've and the hit that we've had in the last few months the numbers of race cancellations uh, does you know present a real concern for all of us within in, in the industry? Do you feel that we're going to come out through this stronger? We can weather the storm. I think obviously, we, we should endure, shall we say? But do, do you feel that we're going to come out of this stronger while while events have been been so badly hit? Uh, fundamentally, yes, I, I do believe we will come back stronger. I think it will rebound quickly. Um, I think mass running is still the one with the the biggest headaches um you know the sold out events are designed for kind of two or three people per square meter so you know that's that's where the big challenges are but there's a lot of collaboration going on another massive positive coming out of this you know our industry didn't collaborate before uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, we, we've uh, been working on 2.6 challenge and sustainability uh, with the likes of uh, marathon um, great run human race um, and that's actually leading probably to the formation of a, a mass participation um, sports organisers uh, kind of industry group, um, which um, you know, is obviously a positive thing. So I think collaborations have been uh, fantastic. I think we will we'll rebound stronger. I think the people who have looked after their event brands, you know, and there's been, you know, some uh, that you know, I, I think will struggle to get people back. I think mm -hmm. ones who have looked after their, their community and their participants, you know, will, I've got the, the support back already and I, and I think people as your research shows want to get back to, to, to racing you know mostly next year um, but you know British triathlons news uh, today uh, that we can start planning events for the autumn uh, is fantastic news and you know Blenheim we've got a plan for a socially distanced event I think multi-sport actually lends itself to it in a more sort of time trial format though of people kind of uh, going off rather than mass waves um, so, you know, we're really excited uh, uh, to be getting out there and actually doing something. Uh, you know, our team have been kicking their heels and can't wait to get started. Oh, ab absolutely. It's going to be so nice just to see some race photography. Yeah. You know, I'm sure obviously from the, the particularly like the consumer media like 220 and Try247 and those sites and uh, tri Triathlete in the US and obviously Slow Twitch, they must be dying to just have some race photography because it, it and that's the thing that then inspires you to get out there and race as well isn't it and and as you say the, the news coming out you know from british triathlon obviously via the government you know and, and guidance is is really really positive and i don't know it just feels to me that we we've, we've had such a lack of positivity it's been you know every day has been sunday in many respects uh and uh, yeah so hopefully uh as you say things will come back stronger so you're you're really bullish and positive about about blenheim then which is which is great news one of the biggest triathlons well if not the second biggest triathlon in the uk is that correct after london I think so, yeah. yeah. Still, uh, the yeah. reduced capacities uh, yeah. this year to, to deal with the social distancing. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a sold out event. Um, you know, it's looking really good. So, nice, fantastic. Crossed for those. fantastic. And does great things for charity too, which is for, for many years. So, that, that's even, even better. Brilliant. Okay. Well, thanks ever so much for your time, Craig. It's been a real pleasure. I uh, hope to keep in touch. Maybe we'll, we'll have you on again uh, when we talk about your next announcement in a month or two. Uh, but in the meantime, thanks, thanks very much and, and take care of yourself. Thank you, Gary. Thanks for having me on. Cheers. Thank you.